Welcome to Educate, Agitate, Organise. Saturday, we are a joint endeavour between Socialist Telly and Don't Leave Organised. And this is a programme all about celebrating grassroots campaigns up and down the UK. Nadia, who have we got this week? So this week, we've got a great campaign. It's all about people coming together to tackle food poverty. And we want to hear about campaigns in your community. We want to cover campaigns in your community. So if you're watching this and you think, well, there's a great campaign that should be on this show, do get in touch. We'll put the email address up on the screen. But now, without further ado, we'll go to the interview. Marcus Rashford has made headlines, rightly so, and been lauded for his amazing campaigning work, defending the right for school children to have a decent meal. But we know it's not just high profile individuals that affect and create change. Uh, real change comes from the grassroots. It comes from people working together collectively and applying pressure to power to get the, the change in their communities that they need. So um, I'm really, really delighted to be joined by some amazing activists and organisers with the national network of uh, fan supporting food banks. Um, I'm just going to very quickly bring in, we've got uh, Neil, um, who is from the Manchester United fan supporting food banks. Neil, thanks for joining us. I am at no problem at all. We've got Kerry, who's from the Aston Villa fan supporting food banks. Kerry, really great to have you here. Cheers, nice to be here. We've got Steve, uh, Newcastle United. My pleasure. Welcome. And then we've got uh, Dave, who's from the the Everton Fan Supporting Food Banks. And, And Dave, I want to bring you in first because... Um, there's some really pioneering work going on in, in Liverpool right now. I wonder if you can tell us a bit about that. Yeah, uh, uh, just, just, just to connect, I'm not from the Everton Fan Supporting Food Banks. I'm from Fan Supporting Food Banks, and I think that's been uh, crucial and key to everything we've done, to be honest with you, State uh, Matt. When we started Fan Supporting Food Banks up five years ago, we were incredibly keen to make sure that it wasn't a blue thing or a red thing, that it wasn't tribal, uh, that it could com- encompass anybody. And that's why it has deliberately never been a mention of Everton or Liverpool uh, within fan support and food banks. My only interest and concern is I don't want to give a tin of beans to an Evertonian. I want to give a tin of beans to someone who's hungry. So I think that's important. That's a really important correction. Thank, thank, thanks, thanks, Dave, for, uh, for 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 making that clear. Um, could you tell us a bit about the work that's going on in, in in Liverpool right now? I know there's been some great stuff in the council. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think uh, initially, Fan Sport and Food Banks uh, started off on Merseyside um, just over five years ago. Um, um, I think when we first started off five years ago, we were extremely keen to get involved and embroiled within local communities, uh, particularly with regards to to having collaboration with minority groups, uh, groups who are often uh, disenfranchised, uh, particularly when you look at food bank users, uh, predominantly they don't have a voice and they don't have anyone who's going to speak on their behalf. So uh, uh, as well as standing outside Anfield and go to some park on a game-by-game basis, it was important uh, for, for us to look at the political aspect of all of this, austerity and the effect and impact of austerity was created by politicians and it can be remedied by politicians. So it was always our intention right from day one that collecting food outside stadiums would be a stick and plaster for a gape and wounds. However, there would have to be a political element to it as well. Um, and I'm pleased to say that um, uh, my home city um, became the first right to food city in the UK when um, Liverpool City Council uh, last Wednesday unanimously uh, passed the motion to support the aims and objectives uh, and to support the fund support and food banks national network in their desire to totally eliminate food poverty by getting the rights of food enshrined in the law. So that's so so Liverpool really leading the way there. Um how 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 did you go about building that pressure in that campaign and what 
uh, I want to bring sort of um, you, you, your comrades in in a minute, but really interesting to hear how that can be applied for the cities. Yeah, yeah. Well, well uh, uh, again, I think um, although Liverpool became the first city to become uh, a, a right to food city, um, I'm, I'm sure me, me, me colleagues and comrades in Newcastle and Manchester and Birmingham won't be that far behind us. And although it was launched in Liverpool and Liverpool were the first, um, we've got plans in place and we're working with politicians uh, of, 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 of all parties, of all shapes, sizes and descriptions. And I can pretty confidently predict um, that other cities will fall in line. And it was about this being a national thing, not a Merseyside-based thing. And um, hot off the presses, um, Rotherham, uh, became the second city to become a right to food city after their, their fun, uh, council uh, 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 agreed on the motion that had gone to Liverpool. We're looking to roll that out uh, and we've had various meetings with politicians from various cities across the whole of the country. Um, and I think one of the things uh, we've learned, that right to food petition, if you look at the petition, which has currently got just short of 30,000 signatures to it. Um, when you look at the map and start digging down into the data on that, uh, the vast majority of, of, of the support and the signatures are from Merseyside constituencies. So that's why we're really keen uh, for all the other local authorities. And I know uh, the other uh, comrades on this call uh, are all doing sterling work behind the scenes and others will follow fairly soon. Neil, I wonder if you could expand on that and tell us a bit about some of some of the work that you've been doing in this uh, this regard. Well, 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 it's similar to Dave's really, uh, and, and I've got to say, uh, Liverpool led the way in this. Uh, but we're rolling it out, especially across Greater Manchester, in the fact that the Mayor of Greater Manchester, Andy Burnham, has placed to put it forward to all the other local council leaders, and hopefully it'll get the nod through. I couldn't see why. I mean, the motion's there, it's dead simple, it needs to be enshrined in law. And as Dave said, it's not about hunger doesn't wear club colours, it's about people that are hungry, and it's about feeding them, for want of a better word. So, yeah, it is there. The pledge is there as well for people to sign, to pledge to push this forward and to support it. And we are getting quite a lot of councillors and MPs supporting that, especially across the trade union movement. But the motion will be rolled out. It is rolling out slowly but surely across the region, Northwest, and then across the country as regards Birmingham and Newcastle and other areas. And I know Steve can feed back in, in the support we've got from Bill Forbes up there, shall I say, and Kez from Birmingham. But we are rolling it out, Matt, and slowly but surely it is getting passed, not just by councils, but also by the CLPs, etc., etc. And that's another link in which we can do to put pressure on for people to sign up and support this. That's great. Um, Kerry, do you want to tell us a bit about what's happening in your area? Yeah, sure. So for me, obviously, this started as, you know, fans at the football, but it's grown much wider. So taking advice from Dave and, you know, the others here, um, I'm now part of a food justice network in Birmingham. And there's a strong coalition of around 150, 160 projects in there. And we're trying to push the um, Right to Food campaign through all their channels. So really, it's about tapping into new networks that perhaps, you know, one person didn't have that on their own. But the more you speak to people, the more you tell people about the campaign um, and the more the, the reach kind of grows because from one person, it's a kind of snowball effect. The more people that learn about it, the more people you can get behind us. So um, in Birmingham at the moment, it's about pushing the message. You know, we're speaking to councillors, we're speaking to different projects. Um, I had a call today with um, Birmingham Public Health. So, you know, we're trying different um, kind of routes outside of the football community and into more of... Um, a kind of national movement as as Neil just said so um, yeah I think it's kind of trickling down um, from Merseyside across the country now and um, yeah it will be a national effort well I hope so and, and um, Steve do you think that you're sort of you're starting as a, from a point as, 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 as I mean obviously many other things as well but as football fans do you think that kind of opens up doors in ways that might might not otherwise does, does that make sense 
Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. It, it, the, the football fans get a lot of criticism for tribalism, and you know, on, on this particular on this particular topic, tribalism is is a fantastic thing because it, the tribe is football. The tribe is football fans. The tribe is the national football uh, network, if you like, that's being created around this right to food and and the food bank networks that that football supporters have connected right away around the country. I mean, from our point of view, we we hooked in very, very early, not long after, I think probably about nine months after after Dave and, and his colleagues started in, on Merseyside. But ours came from more from embarrassment than anything else. You know, when uh, when Ken Loach uh, brought out uh, his movie, um, I, Daniel Blake, um, which was based around the the activities uh, in the west end of Newcastle and the the food bank um, that kind of embarrassed us. We were we you know as as just genuine football fans we weren't aware of really because we weren't active in that in that particular sphere. We were very much that small tribe of football fans, if you like, who were only interested in what happened on a Saturday um, at St James's Park. But uh, we realised that this was this was something. You know, we we had Liverpool fans. Everton fans coming together and and becoming active uh, politically, and um, we we as I say we followed that that uh, that example and just started a, a simple match day collection. Um, we now have an online presence that we've created uh, just the last week or so. We because obviously with no football being played or no fans being allowed in the grounds, that that kind of stifled our ability to 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 collect so we're, we're using an online presence with an online match day bucket um where fans can just very very simply take the link drop some money in um and support the, the the west end food bank and from that point of view the west end food bank is able to be expand itself right across the city now it's not just a west end part of newcastle problem it's right across the city and and, and expanding the region also, from our point of view, we're very lucky because we have some great active MPs. We have Chian Wurra, who's a big football fan. We have Ian, Ian Lavery, again, a big Newcastle supporter. And we've been able to gauge um, a lot from, from their input. And also, we've been able to, to, to branch out and, and to put that political pressure on the Newcastle City Council. And uh, Nick Forbes and, and his colleagues on the council are now actively looking to get behind this Right to Food campaign, and quite rightly so. And so, in terms of coverage for the for, for the network, is it is it countrywide? Is there anywhere where where it needs to be built built up? I mean, I'm thinking is that it, 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 might there be people watching this who 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 want to get involved or want to set something up similar or become part of the network? Yeah, you- yeah, I think I think the, the guys would agree that any any football club out there, any any group of football fans, that's the key. You know, there's 92 football league clubs, there's plenty of non-league football clubs out there, and there there is a network. You know, the network it, it it to some it may appear small, to some they may be just doing something when they when they can. Others are more active, like ourselves and like the guys in Manchester and Birmingham, um, like the like the teams in Sunderland. You know, there's a there's a group in Sunderland who are doing some fantastic work as well. So. And I mean, I'm sure that that the rest of the panel can can expand on who they know. We we're aware of people in in you know we have great connections with the lads who who, who cover West Ham, for example. We have Leeds, we have Huddersfield, um, and I'm sure I'm sure there's a list <laughs> as long as your arm. If we if we wanted to go through it, I think we'll be end up with on all 92 football league clubs because there are <laughs> things happening individually, small and large, dotted all around the country. I think yeah. um, I, I think just to supplement that as well, Steve. Um, I think a couple of years ago we attempted to organise um, a, a fan support and food banks national network. Um, we had a meeting in, uh, in in St James's Park. Um, it certainly uh, exceeded all our expectations, um, and it was thirty plus clubs, fan groups from clubs across the whole of the country in attendance uh, at, at, at that meeting. Uh, 12 months later, we had, uh, had, had another one in Liverpool and he was 40 plus clubs in attendance. Um, and, and the list grows on a day by day. Now, the real good thing uh, about the Fan Support and Food Banks uh, Network is, um, is that every single group has got its own own autonomy. It's got its own independence. It all does brilliant work and comes up with great ideas. 
And I say great deal of satisfaction that we rob most of the good ideas of all the other groups who are doing great work out there. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll give you an example of that. Yeah, please do. Uh, is, is we quite deliberately, when we started, targeted um, minority groups. Um, one of the things we did is we went and bought, uh, visited the local mosque, uh, mosque, and they were quite intrigued by this opportunity in Liverpool and was knocking on the door at the mosque and wanting to come in. And um, much to my mortal shame, I'd never been in a mosque before. We were welcomed in with open arms, spent a couple of hours with them talking about the project. Um, the four main mosques in Liverpool now all collect food and a drop-off points for food uh, to go out uh, around the city. And I think one, one of the many things that I've got a great deal of satisfaction about, one of, one of the first things uh, the Muslim community on Merseyside was saying to us, you're walking through the door as a football supporter, and to all intents and purposes, particularly if you support a Premier League club, someone will ask you, can you get me a ticket for the match? Now, unfortunately, most matches uh, are, are well oversubscribed and all tend to be sellouts. And we looked uh, at, at the idea of how we could uh, get uh, the Muslim community uh, involved in football and then football orientated things. And one of the things we did is we actually, during the last World Cup, we got uh, the World Cup games uh, streamed live into the mosque and watched on a big screen and invited 300 people from the, the local community and, and, and from the, the Muslim community to come together and have a celebration of football, to have a bite to eat, to watch the match and to celebrate the rich diversity of a city like Liverpool. And um, I, 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 I'm ashamed of myself. I didn't know that the Abdullah William Mosque in Liverpool was the first mosque in England You've got something as historic as that on your own doorstep, uh, which literally I drive past a couple of times a day, um, and I wasn't even aware of who it was or what it was and how it was formed. Um, I think that's one of the great things about football. Football is the ideal vehicle to promote something like this. Um, given uh, I, 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 you can go abroad to any country in the world and someone will recognise the club shirt or the club badge and you can actually have a conversation with someone and you can't even uh, speak their language just by throwing pl uh, players' names into that. So football's got this um, ability to pull communities together. We've all got that common bond. Um, that's what's made uh, fan support and food banks, I think, quite novel, that it's enabled us quite quickly over a couple of years uh, from a, a, a real low starting point uh, to engage with the wider community and get people on board. Kerry, um, Dave just made a really amazing point about, you know, the unifying power of football, but you, you did talk a bit about how um, it sort of let, opened doors to lots of other groups that you're now working with. And could you maybe expand on that a little bit more, please? Yeah, sure. So um, it's quite funny, actually. I attended the conference that uh, Dave was on about, the First Network one, and that's how I got involved. So um, I'd, uh, you know, seen it on, I think it was on Twitter and I thought, oh, I'll go along, hear a little bit about it. And now I'm more involved and more active than, than ever. Um, I'm a director now for the Food Bank. So that's come out of this. Um, and part of the thing that we're trying to do in Birmingham is there's a lot of teams within a, a small radius and they're all across different um, parts of the football league. And for us, it's not about, you know, being the Premier League club. Now, now we're back, but it's not about that. But it's um, it's more about, you know, how can we work together as football fans um, who already have that kind of inner passion? So whether it's passion for the club, how can we turn that into passion for um, the local communities? And from that, you know, people, obviously everybody has their day jobs and you get chatting to people about football and it turns out, well, actually I run this project or, you know, I've done a little bit of work with these guys or um, I'm a team youth leader or a church leader. Um, and you start talking to people and that's where the connections start growing. So as Dave was saying, you know, that kind of small nugget of, yeah, we're all football fans actually grows into something a little bit more 
um, substantial. And then that passion turns into passion for local community issues. Now, um, in Birmingham, there are so many different projects ongoing and there's not just the food poverty issue. There's there's lots of issues um you know that affected local communities and it's how we can kind of provide information that is going to help different groups in different ways and what little bits can we do together what bits you know can we pass on to somebody else and having that connection and um, particularly you know at the food bank we can signpost people in different ways but then when it comes to something like this that should be a national effort we can bring people back together um, as kind of one body um, so that's how I kind of see it working um, and so far it is working that way. So um, let's hope that continues. I, I, I think one of the problems, Matt, to be honest with you, is I, I, I know a lot of people say, when we go anywhere and speak about something, people expect you to sit there and rattle off all the statistics, which are horrific. And it's something we never do. Yeah. It bores the ass off people, you know what I mean? Uh, so we need to tell them who we are and what we are and what we're doing. The Fund Support and Food Banks National Network, um, we aren't food banks. We're, we're doing what it says on the tin. We're fans supporting food banks. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that's what the difference is, isn't it? I know that's slightly different because uh, uh, the lads and uh, lasses at Newcastle work a, a, a bit differently but none of the others are actually food well yourselves and Birmingham as well but none of the other fans supporting food banks within the network are actually food banks everything we 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 we, we get donated sort of goes to a food bank rather than to us yeah it's exactly the same at Newcastle what we did well we made sure that that anything that came to us and that's why we got we got the, the West End Food Bank as part of what we wanted to do. We went out and spoke to them first because we we had no idea what was what the what the, the food bank situation was when we first started four years ago. And that's why we've, for example, the the, the cash bucket, it goes straight, you know, with every week that, that money drops straight to the to where it's needed. We don't we don't hang on to it. We don't have even have a bank account. We're not registered as a charity. Mm-hmm. We literally are out there standing outside St. James's Park on a match day when we're allowed to, and we're shaking a bucket and we're getting people from our community bringing us stuff. It's been difficult because we can't do that. So we've gone online and we're we're encouraging, but we're also encouraging other fans out there who come to us and say, where do I send this food to now? And we just signpost them straight up to the West End or to their own food bank that's close by. A drop-off point, you know, we put drop-off points in the city in, in with the city council in the, in the in the Granger market where people could, again, just, you know, if they, if they wanted to do it midweek rather than a match day. So we had that that there. But basically, we're exactly what, what Dave says. We, we are just football fans. We just like to turn up on a match day and we happen to go two hours earlier and we stand there and and after four years we've we've created something that the football fans of Newcastle feel as though they're part of, you know? So um, I wonder if you could um, maybe tell us um, one of your biggest successes of the campaign. Neil? Well, thanks for that. Well, one of the biggest successes, if not the, uh, the biggest, was when we uh, all organised a collectiveness between us to buy a cop... Uh, Premier League matches on pay-per-view. It was a fantastic success. There was loads of uh, money made for food banks out of that. But what I got out of it was a collection of this from the fans in Newcastle who were pushing it to Birmingham, to London, to wherever. It was a fantastic achievement. It shows you what can be done from a grassroots level. Yeah, I think for me, um, well, Villa were on pay for view, I think the most out of the teams. And so we ended up playing each other, some of the others that are here. And it was that, like Neil said, the collective voice there. So when we'd be playing, say, Newcastle, sharing that, and then we'd have both sets of fans getting involved. Um, the amount that we raised was was fantastic for the food banks. But the main thing that came out of it was, you know, pay per view was scrapped in the end. And it just shows you what the collective kind of motion can do. Quite agree. Yes. Uh just, just showing the power that football fans can have when they can come together, what power that the community can have when it comes together on one particular cause or on a number of causes. And that particular one really hit home to Newcastle fans that 
we have a voice. I mean, we've we've we have a loud voice. Sometimes we think people don't hear it, but believe you me, on something like that, it was heard. It was heard nationally, and it was heard commercially, and it hurt the pocket of the Premier League. And because of that, change has happened. Change come. So if you hurt the, you hit them in the pocket, it will affect them, no doubt. And Dave, yeah, yeah. I think um, I, I, I think. Um, uh, that that was a massive success, like throughout uh, the whole of the network. And I know um, on, on on Merseyside we collected uh, uh, just short of one hundred and fifty thousand pounds on a campaign that lasted for one game. Um, and probably what was more significant than that, I, I, I as a follow on to that, I took part in a Zoom call with the Premier League. And gave had to give a report back on, 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 on what the network had been doing. Um, I said to the Premier League that you should probably yourselves and, and the, uh, the the satellite air broadcasters haven't just shot yourselves in the foot. You've blown your legs off. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Sky. Thank BT for the four hundred thousand pound that got donated uh, to food banks nationally. But what's even more important? It's the data we've now got. I know the data on, on, on Merseyside, there was 9,000 people bought into that. They were agreeing with what we were saying and they were totally opposed uh, to the Premier League. So forget about the headline grabbing of, of, of how much was raised. It was the army of activists and volunteers and people who were supporting something that they feel is right and just and once they get behind, and it's no coincidence, 24 hours later at the Premier League shareholders meeting, they, de- uh, they decided to scrap um, pay-per-view television. And um, uh, Neil, uh, so Steve touched on this as well, and I'd be really interested to hear uh, h- hear your thoughts on this. It's, it sounds like that it's a little bit of a political education for some people getting involved with this. Yeah, I mean, um, one thing that I think is a bit of a challenge for us, um, and I think the others will probably agree, is there's so much not just misinformation out there, but there's so much bad information. And um, something that I uh, get a lot of is people think, for example, there's one type of person who is um, struggling to feed their family or one type of person who would go to a food bank or ask for help. But there is no solo uh, stereotypical kind of Joe blogs on the street that would walk into a food bank. And once people realize that, I think it becomes a little bit more relatable for everybody. Um, so one thing that we're trying to do is provide that information, you know, starting at, um, with some of the youth groups in the area is giving people information so they have more of an understanding and then you start to get more of a relatability and people think, well, that's that's not right. So how can we change it? Whereas before, I think um, there's always been this kind of, uh, kind of bad feeling around food banks. Oh, well, people go there because... They, they don't know how to manage their money is one that I always hear a lot of um, or, you know, oh, uh, they've chose to buy other things rather than food. But once you start getting information out there um, and educating people, then I think that's how the campaign again starts to grow because people become aware of what the actual problems are. Um, I don't know if anybody else agrees with that, but. I think, that, I think that's a key point as well. Look, Kelly and I, I know over the years we, we, we've often, uh, spoke about when your option or your alternative is to eat or heat, particularly during the winter, do you put your sense of eating on or, 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 or do you leave it off and provide an evening meal for the family? And I, I think what lots of people fail to understand, if you're in food poverty or food insecurity, your whole uh, your, your whole life uh, is, is, is faced with making real and, and, and I think one of the biggest issues, and you talk about it being a class issue, it is a class issue. You've got tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of kids currently getting uh, getting self-schooled by the parents from home, many of whom. Now, if you've just been furloughed or you've just lost your job, you're not likely to be keeping your broadband provider on. So it's our class again that are the victims of uh, the, the, the policies of austerity. So you, you put the real-life decisions, haven't you? Do I keep money back to pay me rent or my mortgage? Or do I let the broadband go? Or do I give the kids the evening meal? And the real 
real decisions that people are making on a daily basis. And it's somewhat ironic uh, that, what, 14 months ago, uh, the leader of the Labour Party was getting laughed at when they were talking about uh, getting the whole of the country uh, broadband enabled. Um, and he was laughed at, and I think the accusation was it's not a money tree you need, it's a forest. Now all politicians of all persuasions are now actually saying we need to get broadband in because we're actually excluding people because they haven't got it. So it isn't just people who are in food poverty, they're actually in poverty and they're struggling to make ends meet. I think we'd all like to see some broadband communism right now, wouldn't we? <laughs> um, Neil's really patiently been waiting to come in, so I do want to bring Neil in now. <laughs> no, 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 you're right, Matt. Uh, thanks, right. It, it's just a, it is a political stance, and, and, and it should be a political stance at the end of the day. Um, and it should always be people before profits. And I think with a fan supporting food banks, it'll always be that at the end of the day. And I go back to what I said before, Unger doesn't wear club colours. Um, and it's not necessarily uh, the top Premier League club, shall I say. If you look at a club like Stockport County that donated 100 grand to, to food banks, et cetera, et cetera. But after 11 years and more of austerity uh, by this obnoxious government, then it has to be a political stance and we have to get other clubs on board, whether they're amateur clubs or the communities clubs, shall I say, within there, like FC United and other clubs, to get on board with this about the right to food. But it should be a right to food for everybody in this country at the end of the day. But the six richest, don't ever forget that. But the few are getting the most of it, and that can't be allowed anymore. So it is a political stance, and it should be a political stance at the end of the day. And at the end of the day, what we should do and what we are doing as football fans is getting that message out there. What we're waiting for people to do is pick the baton up and run with us, because it's not a closed shop. We're open to anyone and everybody with the ideals of sharing, if you know what I mean. It's a collectiveness of us all. That keeps me going anyway. I've learned from Steve, I've learned from Kez, I've learned from Dave and Ian, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It's about sharing ideas and the ide- ideology of what we've got. Is that socialism is good, it isn't bad. Go back to your broadband, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You're all jumping on the bandwagon now. Yeah. But what we've got to do, we've got the message out there of supporting fans of people. Uh, that, and I think that's that that's key to it all there, uh, Neil. Uh, and, and I think um we 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 were uh, quite tired of repeatedly saying to people, because uh, lots of people and your detractors will say, sport and politics shouldn't mix. Um, um I, I, I often say to people, well, sport and politics do mix. You're sitting in an all Easter stadium because someone made the party, uh, someone someone made the political decision. I can go to Goodison Park. Uh, and not uh, sit in my seat and have a pint but I can go to Goodison Park and watch a boxing match and I can sit in my seat and have a pint I can go to St James's Park and watch the rugby and sit next to Steve and we can have a pint if we're watching rugby but we can't if we're watching football and that is the issue uh, uh, all these draconian measures uh, that governments have imposed on football supporters over the years. It's an attack on our class. And I'm quite clear and I'm unequivocal and I'll un- unashamedly say um, fan support and food banks isn't political. It's not party political, but I'm telling you now, we're incredibly political. We want to go out. We want to we wanna connect with our communities. We want to defend our communities that have constantly been under attack because of this government's policies. That's what it's all about. We're not party political, uh, but we're apolitical. Yeah. I, w- I couldn't agree more. And you know what, as well, what what's good from my perspective and from our perspective is that we're empowering other people we're empowering people within our community to go out and do something themselves. It's waking the community up. And yes, COVID has been part of that. The The right to food is a, is, a, is a massive part of it. The broadband aspect that you talked about is a huge part of it because now politically people are going, you know, we've got, we've got, We've got government ministers coming on television telling us that they want schools to go back, but in the meantime, they want we want teachers working solidly, putting out uh, lessons in classrooms um, online for children. And at the same time, they're not giving them they're not giving them the laptops that the children can't get the broadband, uh, and so it goes on. And and it's 
if, if we can empower people to, to actually realize what's going on in their community, why their community is being stifled, why their children are not getting educated, why they're not getting food. I, my wife works in education. And when she tells me of, of situations where she hears of children who even are going to school, who are, are going through other children's lunch boxes because they're not having lunch themselves, this type of thing. And this isn't something new. This isn't something from, from say, the last fortnight, the last three weeks or the last three months. This is something that, that has happened throughout her time in education that she's come across this. So it's, it's nothing new, but at least we're empowering our community to now rise up and listen and see for themselves and doing something for themselves. And that's why our network, as I said, used to be part of the of the West End and we used to be supporting the West End Food Bank, the biggest food bank in Europe, um, has now been able to stretch its tentacles into the East End, the North and the South of the city. Mm. And, and to, to not only that, but to work with some of these groups and for these groups to feed in and feed out. And the way we always look at it is if somebody comes and says, I'd like to do this, I said, our first words were, go and do it. Go and do it. You'll get the support. Don't worry. You're not going to be on your own. If you go out and start something, you will be supported. So don't be frightened that you're on your own. Um, because very, very quickly, you'll find that, that the community coming together will be there supportive of you. It's just getting out there. It's having the confidence and building your network and talking and listening and be feel empowered, take that empowerment with you. And you'll help people do that. If people want to get in touch with you, you can you can you yeah. can tell them how to do that. Absolutely, absolutely. We, we and, and, and in in the same way as if people come, we can signpost them to to support network, support networks in the community for if they're if they're struggling financially, support networks if they're if they're struggling in debt, support networks if if they're looking for a, a, a washing machine that's broken, um, a, a new cooker that they're not able to cook because they haven't got a cooker, and we're able to point them because we're able to bring that that network together just simply because people contacted us and said. By the way, I've got this. I've got I've got some clothes. We we had it with I know, and it sounds trivial. We, we had it with toys over Christmas, you know, where people were saying, you know, I'd like to I'd like to set something up, or we've created something, but we don't know how now to, who to give those toys to. We don't know how to to get them out in the community. We've we've had a great idea to collect toys or cuddly toys or or food. Where where, where do I take it? And what, just just by have, building your building your network slowly and neatly, and and keeping the contacts going. That's what it's all about community wise. And once you get that network going, you'll be amazed how, how strong the community becomes and how active the rest of the community comes. But I think uh, just, to, to, just, just, just to supplement that statement, it's, it, it, it's spot on. Uh, but getting back to the rights of food campaign, uh, one of the things uh, we've done, uh, we, 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 we've set up, there's a toolkit now, so, irrespective of where you are in the country, if you want to support the campaign um, for rights of food, first things first, get online and sign a petition. Let's get them 100,000 signatures. We should be able to do it quite easily. But secondly, we also need, uh, whether it's um, CLPs or local councils or trade unions, we've got the model resolutions, contact us, get the toolkit, Go and lobby your councillor. Go and lobby your MP. Um, I, I love, uh, we, we, we took part in, um, in a Zoom call last week with uh, Andy Burnham. Uh, and he said, uh, well, you're pushing against an open door. And I said to him, we're not pushing against an open door. The door's wide open and you're now dragging us in. <laughs> we need to see some real action yeah. from the councils. And um, it's no good uh, Liverpool flying a flag over there. Um, uh, over the town hall or the q and buildings with a flag on saying we're a right to food city. It doesn't mean anything. We need all the other towns and cities. Let's be brutally honest. We've got a humanitarian crisis on our streets where people are going hungry. It's become an epidemic. We won't do that by just getting the poor city council to do it. So I would urge anyone from anywhere in the country, if you're interested in starting something and getting your council or your councillors or your MPs, your trade union branches or your wards, contact us. We'll get the templates out to you and we'll get you on board because we need to make sure that this grassroots movement is a collaboration between 
activists right throughout the whole of the country. Yeah. I mean, that's a really great place to 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 to, to finish. Um, Neil, have you got anything you'd like to add add to that? No, not really. I, I, just to uh, touch on what Dave said, if anybody wants any information, feel free to go either directly to the Fan Supporting Food Bank website or contact us as individuals. Steve in the north of England, Kez in the heartbeat in, the, in Birmingham, me in Manchester. We also have Alex from MCFC Food Banks who does a lot of work. You can contact Alex. But no, what we've got to do is, is as Dave said, people sign the pledge, people get involved at the end because there's a lot of holes in the dam and we've only got so many fingers between us. We need people to get on board at the end of the day. Kerry? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just before you come well, in, Kerry, I think <laughs> what, what, what's really important about all this as well, Matt, uh, what, what, one of the things there uh, over the last uh, week or so, this isn't just about uh, councils. Um, and, and when you look at the enormity, uh, Everton and Liverpool football clubs have signed a pledge to support uh, the Rights of Food campaign. Um, Liverpool Law Society have pledged to support the claim. So there's businesses and organisations. doesn't matter whether uh, it's a trade union or a political party or a council. We're keen to get anyone on board. We need to drive this through. Sorry, Kerry. That's all right. <laughs> um, very valid point. Um, I, I was just going to close by saying, you know, we are in a state of national crisis with this and it's been long before the global pandemic hit um, and we can't continue spiralling further and further into a pit of despair. We need change and we need it now. So whether you're one person who, you know, has the same thoughts that we do, then use your voice, raise it, speak to someone, anyone, start those little kind of dominoes falling and get involved. Um, I mean, I think we'll all be happy to take questions from anyone at any point. Um, but even if you just start by, you know, speaking to your friends, a small group of people can make a lot more change than you'd probably realise. I mean, look at uh, look at us, for example. You know, we started from just a few of us and um, and now what we've become. So, um, yeah, just start raising your voice, I think, is really important. And Steve, any final words? Just Just to tell people you're not on your own. You wouldn't be. You won't be on your own. This is this is bigger than you think. And be part of it. Come join it. Get behind the network. Sign the petition. Get this. Get this message out there. And uh, together, we. W- I'm sure we can resolve this. Amazing. So listen. Thank you to Dave and Kerry and Neil and Steve. Really, really, really powerful demonstration there of what what class consciousness can do in a community when people get together and, and, and fight for each other. So we really urge you support this campaign, support the petition. Um, they mentioned lots of ways you can get in touch. We're going to put all of those in, in the description. Some of them you probably saw pop up on the screen as well. Um, if you do want to get in touch with us and ask any questions about um, about how these guys are organising, we'll, we'll do our best to put you in touch with them. We might invite them back onto the programme. I hope we you guys come back at some point (laughs) fantastic we really look forward to hearing an update from you um thanks guys thanks thanks for joining us thanks very much Matt. appreciate it thanks for you So um, another really great bunch of speakers there. I mean, we've, we've actually, we've, we've had that recording for, for a while, um, but I think it's really timely given, well, um, what the budget's potentially going to do to people later on this year um, and everything we've seen since. I mean, since that recording, we saw those shocking pictures of people queuing in the snow in Glasgow. What are your thoughts, Nadia? Absolutely. I mean, it's depressing, isn't it? I mean, it, it it's like Dickensian levels of food poverty. Um, you know, the, the right to food, um, you know, being enshrined in law. I, 2021 and we're having to ask for the right for food to be enshrined in law because so many people don't have access to it. You know, I, my local food bank um, last week fed 1,200 people 
in my constituency. You know, they're, they're, they're shifting like nine tons of food. And, and this isn't charity. Um, you know, this is a necessity. This is what people need. You know, we've we've seen, um, like you said, the the queues in Glasgow. We've we've um, heard about you know people that are going to these food banks are, are working people. This isn't people that you know that would be you know clusters um, and you know derogatory terms. These are people that are in low paid income jobs you know the nurses one percent pay rise you know these are the same people that are then having to go to food banks so for me it's 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 just it, it's disgraceful that we don't have a national food strategy with this government and we are having to um you know provide food for people for families and for children it, I, it just beggars belief and that's and it's this it is it is a purely sort of Tory conception isn't it this idea of the undeserving poor I mean we're all the undeserving poor in the eyes of the Tories at the end of the day and I think another really important aspect of um, of, of, of what those excellent comrades are doing and they've talked about it in the interview is um it's, it's, this is class solidarity it's, it's it's breaking down all that tribalism and it's understanding our shared struggles and our, our shared circumstances and I think that's what makes it so so important yeah, I totally agree. I mean, and I think what people can do is, um, you know, there is there are some motions that can be passed at councils, and we've seen, you know, Liverpool and Rotherham councils have passed this right to food. Um, so please encourage your local councillors and your Labour parties to get in get in behind this. There's also a petition, and we really need um, to get the petition up to a hundred thousand signatures by June. Um, you know, we have to all get behind. Behind this, you know, I grew up on free school meals. I know what food poverty feels like, um, and like I said, you know, we've got such levels of food poverty now. Um, it, it, it's just, uh, it's staggering. It really is staggering. And like you said, we've just got all we all have to pull together around this. Absolutely. So yeah, um, we'll we'll put links up to the the petition. That's really important. So the reason why we need to get that to hundred thousand, if you get. A petition to 100,000 in this particular way set up on the government's petition portal, then there needs to be a debate about it in Parliament. Um, so it's really important we get that. We're about halfway there, so we need a push on this. We really do. Um, what we'll also do is there's a website called They Work For You. We'll put a link for that up on the screen. You just put your postcode in and that tells you who your local MP is, who your local councillor is, and write to them and say, look, has our council, has our borough, has, are we thinking about about passing motions about rights of food. Um, go onto the website for fans supporting uh, food banks because they've got loads of really useful links as well. I, I think I think I'm right in saying they've got links to motions you can pass it pass at your CLP um, or your trade union level. Um, sorry, trade union branches. Um, Nadia, do you have anything? Any last words? Like I said, just get behind the petition, get behind the motion to council. We absolutely need to ensure that this government has a national food strategy. We cannot have more food banks in the UK than we've got McDonald's. Um, it's a national disgrace um, in the fifth richest country, uh, one of the fifth richest countries in the world. It's just a national disgrace that we're still in 2021 talking about um, food poverty. So please get behind it. And what I would say is, you know, Know, don't leave organised. This is what we're all about. You know, we're about making sure that we highlight these types of campaigns that are so important um, so that people can um, be inspired to get involved and, and make the changes that absolutely need to be made under such um, a pernicious Tory government. And there you go. And, and, and reach out to other people, as the comrades in the video said, you know, learn from one another, teach one another, uh, network with one another. We're all in this together. Most importantly, do not go gentle into that good night. Watch Educate, Agitate, Organise every Saturday night. Thank you and we'll see you next week.